This is the 16th video in Chapter 4 of Google SketchUp for Dummies. And this one's about putting eaves on buildings with peached roofs. Now, the eave of a roof is the part that overhangs uh, from the wall. So, if this is the wall of the building, then the roof is going to kind of come out like this. The roof doesn't usually just come right to the edge of the wall and then go down, because then the water would just run right down the, the side of the building. So, the part that kind of overlaps the wall and sticks out is called the eave. And those are the kinds of things that you probably want to make before you model the pitch of the roof, um, just because it's a whole lot easier. What I've done is I've just kind of created a little boxy uh, L-shaped thing here that we're going to call a building. And what I want to do is, is put um, a kind of a sloped roof on the top of this thing. And I don't know if it's hipped or gabled or what yet, but I do know that I need a three-foot eave, basically roof overhang, going all the way around this object. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. Okay. Step one in doing any of these things is always to take everything that's in your building, basically anything that you don't want to change, and make a group out of it. So what I just did is I selected the whole thing. Now let's do that again. I'm going to select the whole thing, right click on it, and say make group. Now, because that's a group, I can't accidentally mess it up. Nothing I do to it, short of being inside the group, is actually going to going to um, mess it up in any way, so I can be pretty confident that no matter how badly I mess up the roof, I can't mess up the, the building that I'm already pretty happy with. Okay, the next thing I need to do is create a face that's going to go on top of this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create that face outside the group. So I just made a group out of this, this part of the building. I'm not going to go inside the group to make the face. I'm going to stay outside the group and make the face outside the group. Okay, so the way that I describe how to do this in the book is to use the line tool to just go ahead and retrace by snapping to all these little inference points. Retrace the outline of the face that you'd like to appear. So there I have it. Right there I just created a face by creating a whole bunch of coplanar looped edges um, that I wanted uh, that I wanted to exist so that I can create this roof. Now, there's another way that I could have done that. I'm going to undo these things a little bit. Watch what happens if I do this. I'm going to double click on the inside so that I'm inside the group right now, and I'm just going to select the top edges. There we go. All I did there was select the top edges of my building, and I'm going to go up to Edit and say Copy Those, and then I'm going to go outside the group that I made. So I'm outside the group right now, and I'm going to go paste in place. And when I paste those in place, what I've done is I've made a copy of those edges that I just copied, and I put that copy exactly where they were before, except that they're outside the group now. And what I'll do is I'll just use the line tool to retrace one of those edges, and I've ended up with exactly what I would have ended up with before. And where that's really useful is if you've got an outline of a building that's actually quite complex. If you've got all kinds of loopy, swoopy curves and other lines and stuff, it's kind of a pain to use the um, the line tool to retrace all those, and that's where copying the edges inside the group and then pasting them in place outside the group can come in really handy for creating these kinds of faces that you need. Okay, that was a little bit of a, um, of a diversion, but we're back into this now. What we've got is a face. I'm going to use the offset tool right up here to offset some edges exactly three feet. I'm going to type in 36, or I could have typed in three feet, just like that. Look at the bottom of the screen. Three apostrophe for three feet, or 36 for 36 inches, and enter to create a three-foot offset. And then what I'm going to do is double-click on this inside face. Watch that. Double-click on the inside face to select the face and all the edges that form the perimeter of that face, and then I'm going to hit the delete key on my keyboard. And what I've ended up with is I've deleted away that face. The best way to see that probably is going to be for me to hide the rest of this building. So let's just go up and hide it. And what you'll see, so I, I had undone, uh, I undid basically, I went to, I don't know, undid is the past tense of undo, but I went to undo before I hid that. This is what I did. I double clicked on this face to select the face and all of its edges, and now I'm going to hit delete. And what I've got now is just a face, and that face is exactly three feet bigger all the way around than the um, section of the building that I wanted to draw the roof on. And it's kind of as simple as that. At this point, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the push-pull tool to pull that 2D face that forms the bottom of the roof, basically the eaves, 
into a depth so that I have what's called the fascia right here, the side part of the edge of the roof, and that's where a gutter goes. And in this case, I'm just going to undo a step. I'd like that to be, mm, I don't know, let's say 8 inches tall. There we go. And now I've got an 8 inch fascia. And if I go to my edit, unhide, last, you'll see that I have the building, I have the roof overhang, and it's extruded up into a fascia. And at this point, what I can do is go ahead and start modeling the roof on top of here with all kinds of slopes and gables and hips and pitches and dormers and all the kinds of things, including lasers, that you might want to put on top of a roof. Okay, that's the end of the 16th video in Chapter 4 of Google SketchUp for Dummies.